Hello, I uh, <clears throat> want to talk about my downstairs new tank. I'm going to go through all the specs and everything I'm running on it to keep it nice and pretty. And I am using an orange filter. Um, that is because the light is so powerful it will turn everything in the room blue. Um, so I'm running an orange filter in order to try to cancel some of that out. So, starting over here, we of course have our HANA salinity checker and HANA alkalinity checker. I uh, use all of the HANA equipment for testing my parameters. And then I use the Red Sea stuff for dosing. For cutting up coral and propagation, I use the Griffin Diamond Bandsaw. And this is the smaller of the two versions. For flow, I am using two MP40s. As you can see, those are attached right there. And these two MP40s are in sync with each other. Very nice, thanks to the Mobius app, you no longer have to buy the ReefLink. Um, let's see. So it is a four foot long tank um, by two feet, and you may be thinking that two MP40s is a bit overkill, and you're right, it is. Um, we have of course our cleanup crew in the form of a Tomini Tang. He wants to ever stick his head out. So that guy right there. And the other one is a damsel, which is going to be impossible to find. So, what we have next, I suppose, is the overflow unit. I was unable to find a tank with a um, overflow built in. So I'm using this overflow box, it's working quite well. Might be a little bit hard to see due to the intense blue light of the Kessel. I'm using this um, eShop's acclimation box as a sort of, um, sort of a enclosure for my emerald crabs. Um, I have Unfortunately, I had experience with emeralds going rogue on my corals, so I've contained them in that little box. I'm using the older model, the Kessel AP700. Um, absolutely fantastic light to do all of my corals, and I will show the corals separately. I also got these frag racks for Christmas, which allows me to put some of the uh, birds' nests up a little bit higher off the ground. So coming down here, we have the Aquatop Titanium here. And this is the 500 watt, and you may be thinking 500 watts for a roughly 100 gallon tank is a little bit overkill. But not when you're in a garage and it's cold out. This isn't Florida. Now, we have the... It's going to be quite hard to see. Hopefully I don't drop my phone, but we have the ice cap um, auto top-off unit. Um, I absolutely love the ice cap because it has a failsafe in case it uh, malfunctions. I'm using the Octo Skimmer, uh, very nice. Mm. So that protein skimmer is skimming all of my fish poop out. It is the 110, I believe, the 110. Um, have a small CJ return pump that pumps into this. Um, K1000 chiller 
which then returns cold water into my tank. Now this is very nice because uh, I'm in North Carolina, so we have relatively cold winters and then very hot summers. So that overflow box runs the water back down into that tube, and then that tube goes into my sump, which is a custom sump, um, far cheaper and more gallon size than uh, anything else. It's simply a 40 gallon breeder. Um, and I'm using, to separate these two, I'm using a Dexter's Dividers, which you can order off of Amazon. Very nice quality um, divider. I've had absolutely no issues with that. Let's the water pass perfectly fine, but keeps the Kato um, contained. Now that Kato Morpha is being fueled by a Kessel, um, I believe, uh, I think they call this the H, there's an H and an A, I think the H, this is the H, because it's the refugium light. Um, then we have a very, very big CJ pump, returning the water up about, eh, three feet. So that is a, uh, kind of, kind of overkill on that, um, return pump, I will admit. Uh, in fact, if I had to underdo anything in this tank, it would be that return pump, simply because I have to have it all the way turned down for this, for that overflow box to keep up. But that just means it's such a high quality pump. I love all my CJ stuff. So now we have all of our wires, um, I highly recommend if you ever set anything like this up to get a trip light because you can control each one individually. Um, it's such a pain in the butt to have to unplug the whole strip and then everything shuts off when you only want uh, one thing off like that um, return pump for the chiller. It's the middle of winter so I'm not running it. No reason turn everything off. So this entire stand was custom made um, with just some 2x4s and uh, some fake wood flooring to make it kind of look a little nicer. Um, this light is being supported by 2x4s. So over here we have the uh, the RO supply. Um, right here I've got a um, return pump. I've got that hooked up to this vat, which is connected to over here. So what this is, this is my um, this is my salt mix, and uh, it's about. 35 gallons. Um, each of these are 35 gallons. Now the salt mix. Um, I use um, Red Sea Corpro. That is my preferred salt. Um, very nice stuff. Um, really good bang for your buck. Especially with all the parameters it gives you. Um, and then I use that to fill up all of my uh, all of my jugs here, all my jugs get filled up for water changes. Um, in fact, I made this so that I could literally just take this guy out and then shove him into the sump. Makes water changes a lot easier um, to do. That means you'll do them more often. Now, I've got an RO system and then this is the coral. They're both feeded separately from this RO unit right here from Bulk Reef Spot. And that RO unit fills both of these with RO. And then I take the, the salt scooper and it's about uh, one cup per two gallons, I think, is what I've <clears throat> about got it down to. So one cup of salt per two gallons. Um, pour it right in there. Run the power head for about, oh, uh, about eight hours, get it nice and mixed up, and 
fact, I could probably start topping this guy off. Then that starts this little, it's magic, which runs into that. And that is just about my setup for the downstairs tank. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot going on. Um, well, there is, but we keep it pretty simple here. For the Red Sea Max Nano Aquarium, um, this is a 20 gallon uh, aquarium. Uh, I'm going to show you the equipment and the setup I'm currently using. Um, this is perhaps the simplest, well, the second simplest aquarium I own. Um, aside from my freshwater tank right there, which literally just has two. Um, two filters on it, and that's it. Um, so, this tank right here is being run by an AI single LED light. Um, very nice light. I've had this for about a year. Um, it's done wonderfully. It, it reaches to the bottom. Everything's growing really well. Um, you really see just how nice of a tank the Red Seas let you make uh, this stuff this stuff isn't cheap but I tell you what these are the nicest aquariums probably out there um, this particular model does not have a sump because it is the max nano um, so that affords you all of this room for uh, storage that's a five gallon jug of RO and honestly it doesn't even look like five gallons in something this big it looks more like so this lets you put a whole assortment of stuff um, from the auto top off in the bottom to the power heads and the gravel siphon. Keeps everything really simple, um, clean. Uh, you don't have anything hanging out from the sides. You got nothing, uh, really nothing but that power head magnet. It's a really nice tank. Now these red seas are amazing, especially the all-in-one systems, which have your filter sponge, um, and then the filter sock underneath that, and then of course you have your protein skimmer, which will skim very nicely. Um, honestly, it works probably better than the hang on the back skimmers that take up all that room and look like uh, Kind of junky. Of course, then you also have your uh, thermometer. Um, I never trust the thermometer that the heaters come with, um, simply out of principle. Now that doesn't mean they're not good, but I am using another Aquatop titanium heater, um, keeping it about 77 is where I like it. And this lets you have the return pump, all that plumbing is in the back. Um, in fact, these models come with an RO auto top off unit um, themselves, so you don't have to pay for one. But I've elected to remove it and put my own simply because I like having five gallons. Uh, lets you change it once every. For this particular tank, it's probably about once every three weeks, four weeks, um, instead of once every couple days because the, uh, the vat on that auto top off that comes with the system uh, is quite small. That's my only complaint and really can't do anything about that because it, uh, there's nowhere to put it. So these are very nice. You can have it with that top or without. I personally like the top on because it hides the protein skimmer. So we're gonna keep that guy on. That AI light is powering this entire thing along with that that power head so that is enough for all of this very um, cost effective once you get the tank itself the tank itself um, usually comes in a combo with the light and the tank uh, so it can be quite 
pricey at first, but once you get past that, really it's just so self-sufficient that the most expensive thing you'll be adding to this tank is going to be the live rocking core. And that concludes the salt water um, on the fresh. Now there are literally just two filters. In fact, I'm going to probably replace that one in for another one of these. Um, just really good filters. I this is the most low maintenance tank um, I have. Probably haven't done a water change in about a month on this guy. Um, just really easy, really simple, um, crystal clear water. Uh, the lighting, you don't have to pay for super expensive lighting to grow corals. Um, you don't even really need that good of lighting to grow these mangroves. Uh, they just look cool. So, I mean, this uh, is a little bit less uh, all-in-one in compared to the uh, Red Sea unit. You have, obviously, you see your heater, you see your, your filters, all that stuff can kind of be... Uh, annoying and distasteful, but for simple and easy, this is the best. Um, I love freshwater stuff too. Going on to corals. Um, this is the exciting bit for our uh, frag farm. So right here, the red one we have is called a Ganyapora, a very, very uh, desirable red. And then we have some uh, orange leptosa, I believe. Uh, it's a very similar in wording to the other one. Um, I'm simply. It'll come to me. We have some uh, green star polyp, very nice there. I'm gonna hopefully that's gonna grow over that little live rock log I've set on there. We have some Pavona, also known as Cactus Coral, that's growing very well, um, very underrated. A lot of people should be uh, seeking this out more, it grows super fast, super easy for uh, SPS. We have some Zoanthids, these are really cool fire and ice hybrid. Um, there's so many different types of fire and ice that who knows if these are wild caught or cult cultivated. We got some more in the back there, they're just not as brilliant of a um, red and blue like these guys. We have some more zoanthids, um, those are very popular, uh, lots of different colored varieties, um, lots of different names too, that can sometimes be really confusing. Got some really cool greens, reds, purples, just about any color you can think of, there's a zoanthid for it. Got uh, some pipe organ. That guy's gonna probably get fragged pretty soon with that bandsaw. We have some uh, some pallies. Those are in the family of uh, with zoanthids, but uh, just get a little bit bigger and also a little bit tougher, especially on the sand bed. These guys right here, um, I believe, were called nuclear deaths. Um, that was the name given to me. Very cool, and these will grow super duper fast, so I have them isolated to their own combo rock. Got a very pretty pink chalice here. See those really nice pink lines in it? That's gonna look like uh, the, the green one I have in the uh, Red Sea. Got a nice tree leather here. Hard to, hard to see its size, but it's a, it's a decent sized one. Got some uh, some yellow submarine Flavia. It's also one of my favorites right there. Have uh, the blue and pink tip torch. That's not looking too good. One of its heads lived, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and frag that up. We have this green and blue Lobophilia. He's doing quite well. Then we have some war paint. Fabia, that's the red and gold stuff right there. If I can get focus. Then we have, of course, our uh, 
Dragon Soul Favia. Now that's a that's a cool one right there. Just wish it grew faster. Got some sort of. I was told that this was an Acan. Um, not entirely sure. Uh, doesn't feel like an Acan, but I've been wrong before, so I'm just gonna call it an Acan. Got a little bit of scroll coral there that's recovering nicely. Got a Acan, Acan right here. Um, this looks a lot better in person. It's actually a got red and blue striping and it looks really cool like some sort of splatter effect got this really big wall hammer and he's doing quite nicely and I'm actually gonna pause the video so I can turn these gigantic power heads off thanks to the Mobius app um, I'm able to turn those power heads off lickety split and uh, they've been synced up so I've heard a lot of complaints about the uh, the Mobius app, but it did come out in 2020. So like any recent app, it's going to have its bugs. Um, I've experienced plenty of those already. Um, but it seems that everything's working for this video. It's excellent. Let's see. There we go. Beautiful wall hammer. A lot of people don't like wall hammers. Uh, a little bit harder to keep, a little bit less forgiving, um, but this guy right here is awesome. Absolutely beautiful pink edges with this neon gold orange in the centers. Um, this guy's also huge, I mean, he's about eight, nine inches in length uh, by about six inches wide in the middle. I mean, he's just absolutely huge, and beautiful. Also have this, this Duncan. He's also uh, one of my favorites right there. Grows super fast for a uh, LPS. Has these really beautiful wavy tentacles to him. And also really forgiving. Oh, those are a super hardy coral. They do quite well in aquariums. Got some uh, these clove polyps. I do not believe have a name to them. Uh, unlike the fireworks that I have, these are just some uh, very neon pink uh, cloves. Got some uh, orange setosa right there, looking very nice. Um, also got this mystery acropora, I'm not sure what its name is. Um, hard to see even with this filter, but it does have a very nice gold to it. Um, it's got yellow um, yellow polyps when it comes out one of my personal favorites right here the red dragon acropora very nice it's a pretty fast grower um, also I I found it to be pretty forgiving it was actually one of the first corals put in this tank when it was cycling um, just looks absolutely stunning um, under a better orange Ew, it's just neon red. Um, absolutely beautiful. Of course, we have our uh, our Montiporas. I'm trying to do that uh, stitch together hybrid method. Hopefully, I'll get some cool stuff. And we just have our um, red Montes. Then we have uh, the Jack o' Lantern Leptoceras. A very nice one. In fact, uh, I haven't seen a lot of Jack o' Lantern lately. Have this Martian Manhunter Acropora. The uh, return pump's kind of making this video hard. That is the green one right there. Maybe you can see it better. It is this guy right there. He's got quite a bit of orange and uh, green to him. Yep. Have of course our um, bird's nest. These are going to look absolutely stunning when they get bigger. Um, this one right here was recently revived. Um, it was under a rock for two weeks, um, no light whatsoever, and it completely recovered. Uh, it took about 
three months, but it has completely regained all of its health, uh, looking absolutely great. Just goes to show that this ORA bluebird's nest is just impossible to kill. And then we have some that my uh, turbo snail generously decided wanted to be fragged, so he uh, he smacked that, but it's uh, healed quite nicely since being on the plug. We have another great one. Uh, these are gobstopper zoanthids. Um, very nice. Uh, unfortunately, the, there is still quite a bit of turbulence in the water surface, but they're a neon orange with a green center to them. Uh, those are also really, really popular. So I'm trying to grow those out. And all of this has been made possible by that, uh, that Kessel light. Um, absolutely phenomenal light. Uh, the app has been working well. I've heard some complaints when you have multiple of these Kessel AP 700s um, linked together on the app. It does cause some problems, but when you have them singular, um, the app is just fine. In fact, uh, I don't think there are any apps right now that are currently giving me a headache um, other than the, the Mobius, but that's a new one, so it, it gets a pass. And that is the uh, inventory for the old uh, frag farm here. Thanks for learning about all the equipment with me, and uh, I'll be sure to be more up to date with the, uh, the coral inventory. Thanks.